you're watching Behind TV European Service. I'm Ines Boger, and today I welcome Tom Colthorp, who is a senior analyst for EMEA um, Living Research and Strategy at JLL. Hello, Tom, and thank you for joining us. Hi, Ines, my pleasure. So you've just published the European Living Survey, and, and my question is simple. Um, how investments, attitudes, ambitions, and actions um, for the living sector have adjusted over the last year? Well, firstly, 2020 was you know, obviously a pretty unprecedented year in many ways, not least in terms of real estate investment. Firstly, the ambition to invest in living continues to grow. 59% of respondents uh, were looking to increase allocations to living in 2021, which was up from 38% when we first ran the survey in 2019. Uh, living investments have shown really resilient performance over the, the last year, 18 months uh, through the pandemic uh, in terms of very high rent collection, very high occupancy levels. Um, you know, ultimately, it's a sector that's driven by you know, resilient demand, resilient and counter-cyclical demand drivers. It's unsurprising, therefore, that you know, many investors are looking to increase exposure to, to, the, to, to the variety of subsectors that living offers. Sustainability and ESG, uh, to, you know, a, a topic that's been the forefront of investment uh, decisions for a number of years. And our survey highlights the growing role living plays uh, within, within these conversations. 85% of our respondents have sustainability metrics and criteria mandated within their investment profile um, compared to 67% back in 2019. So it's a growth, you know, despite um, you know, wider turmoil, despite COVID, that it's remaining incredibly important. Um, indeed, we've seen a number of market moves which suggest ESG is at the forefront of living investment decisions from announcements of net zero pathways uh, to actively decarbonizing existing portfolios and tie-ups with developers to build only green uh, and energy efficient uh, new stock. Uh, finally, in terms of uh, expectations for this current year, 2021, investors have an incredibly positive view of the living sector. The multifamily uh, element of living has been a standout element within this. Uh, and after a record year in, of investment in 2020, 85% of respondents believe that volumes will increase through 2021. Right, and, and your study also shows that living currently accounts for 25% of all uh, real estate uh, investments in the EMEA region, which is 9% uh, up from 2010. Do you see this growing trend um, continue over the last, um, the next years? Uh, the short answer to that is yes. Uh, the survey shows a significant appetite for investors to, de to deploy capital into the living sector. Uh, cross you know, cross sector, cross uh, asset class investors are looking to, to diversify and rebalance portfolios. The living sector is impro um, proving incredibly attractive at the moment. Um, as I said before, around uh, the counter cyclical nature, the strong investment performance uh, through the last year, year and beyond. And on top of this, many living specialists, investors who only invest in you know, one or two living asset uh, types have announced ambitious uh, expansion plans uh, for the sector. Um, the, the, the real estate allocation from our respondents is current, was currently sits at 13%, but if ambitions to expand into living, expand into new markets and new subsectors uh, were fully achieved, this would, uh, this would rise to 21%. Indeed, so you, you mentioned the 25% uh, over the first three months of 2021, living actually accounted for 35% of direct real estate investment across the region. Uh, quarterly figures can obviously be a little bit misleading, but we expect uh, you know, the, this growth to be symptomatic of the full year 2021 figure and uh, and, and moving forward uh, beyond that. Um, based on investment uh, allocation intentions, the survey highlighted around 70 billion of capital actively targeting European living. Uh, the sector has proved its resilience through, through the disruption um, in 2020 uh, and will continue to attract a pretty significant uh, capital deployment in the future. Finally, I have one last question. And, and what type of living assets and markets are more targeted by European investors or investors in Europe? Yes. So, so firstly, living incorporates you know, a range of uh, operational real estate. The, you know, the bed sector is pretty broad and diverse. Uh, it includes student housing, it includes co-living, it includes multifamily, affordable housing and kind of a, a spectrum of healthcare real estate as well. Um, there are many investors who have exposure to kind of one, one, maybe two of these, consider them as sector specialists, um, and there are you know, relatively few with exposure across living as a whole. Um, however, the appetite to expand across the living spectrum is there. 
over 25% of our respondents uh, were looking to become a full suite living investor. Um, and in terms of sector liquidity, the multifamily, the multifamily element is, is by, far the, by far the largest, around 70 to 75% of uh, the regional volumes uh, within living come through multifamily, followed by healthcare and student housing. Uh, affordable housing and co-living are, are much more kind of niche, niche, niche segments, relatively new, and as a result, a lot smaller. Um, in 2020, Germany's living uh, investment market was the continent's largest at 25 billion euros. Uh, the UK was 16 billion, Sweden 7 billion, France and the Netherlands had 6 billion each. So these are clearly the you know, where, where opportunities uh, exist and, and the number of deals and the volume of deals are, are largest. Uh, but that you know, not not to say that there aren't smaller smaller emerging markets, particularly in southern Europe um, and in in the CEE region that uh, the investors are looking at. Right, Tom. Thank you for joining us. No, thank no, thank you. Thank you all for watching.